name's Elizabeth McCauley, and on behalf of this whole church and all of creation and all that is good and holy and delightful in the world, I welcome you tonight. We expect that you will make noise. Um, and so we gave you bells to make noise with. We're gonna invite, you can ring them. Let's see what they sound like. There you go. We are gonna ring those bells during the, not anymore. <laughs> We're gonna ring those bells during the refrain of angels we have heard on high and you will love the noise. Um, if you would do me a favor, would you move toward the center so we can fit all of our guests in? And these two front pews became available, and so, you know, if you're late to church, you sit in the front row. That's what happens. Um, I want to let you know one thing that we do that's very different during this church service. Right before the sermon, we are going to dismiss any of the children that want to be in an impromptu Christmas pageant, and they will all go back to the back of the church in the narthex area there, and they can choose to be Mary or Joseph or an angel or a shepherd. And if you're an adult and you always wanted to be an angel, now's your chance. Um, and as the story of uh, Christmas is read, the children will come up and be part of an impromptu pageant. So just want to let you know, I'll tell you when it's time for the kids to go and if they want to, and then we'll just create this story together. So um, if you would do me a favor, and will you rise as you're able, and let's join in the call to worship as you see it in your bulletin. On this night, we celebrate promises made. Promises about peace on earth and goodwill lived among all people. Angels still sing and miracles are still real. God lives in mangers and refugee camps. God's promises live. The miracle of God's love lives in the vulnerable and the mighty. May we hold to our hearts the wonders of holy love. May we live in ways that bear witness to love.
You may be seated. <laughs> Will you join with me in a word of prayer? God of love, we are filled with joy this night. We watch and we anticipate and we ring and we wait with excitement. We are ready. We are taking care to pay attention. Will you show up? Will you help us to see your sparkle that is in the faces of our children, in the voices of our brothers and sisters, in our dog's eyes reflected off tree lights? Will you help us love the cold and dark and know that your light is always here, always warm, always present? We love you, Lord, and are so grateful. Help us to be open and learn this night. Amen. And I would love to invite any other child or child at heart who wants to come forward for our time with children because you are going to get a present if you need any sort of bride. So you can come and have a seat up on these steps over here. Come and have a seat. Welcome all. I love your sparkles and the things that you share. This is wonderful. So I want to know, who is it that we are celebrating today? Does anyone know? You are so far away that I can't reach you. Who are we celebrating? Advent. Oh, I didn't have you on. Say it again. Advent. We're celebrating Advent, but whose birthday is Advent celebrating? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. This is a very good lesson in Sunday School Answers, that Jesus is usually the right answer, right, when we're talking about these things. So you can start passing these around. You can take a bracelet I'm just going to dump them right there. So you can go ahead and pass some of these over here. These are bracelets. Does anyone who knows letters know what those four letters are? Does anyone know what do those four letters say? Does anyone know what those four letters stand for right now? What do you might guess? What do you think the J maybe stands for based on our other Sunday school answer? Yeah, Riley. Jesus, excellent job. But what do you think those other WWJD letters stand for? Does anyone know? Has anyone ever heard that before? Yeah, what have you heard? Um, well, no, we got Jesus. Christ is assumed with the Jesus part. Does anyone know what WWJD stands for? A couple of people. What does it stand for, Brenda? 
What would Jesus do? Should we give her a little, should we give her a little applause? Should we give Brenda a little applause? Good job, Brenda. Yeah, you've got your candles over here. So these bracelets are a reminder that when we celebrate Christmas and we talk about Jesus, it's not something we just do one day a year. Christmas is just one day a year, but we get to celebrate Jesus all the time because Jesus is with us all the time. Raise your hand if you knew that. Did you know that Jesus is with you all the time? Well, if you don't, do, I, do you know that? Raise your hand if you know that, that Jesus is with you all the time. So even if you are at church an hour a week or two hours a week, but you're at home all the time, you can remember that Jesus is still with you no matter where you are. When you wear your bracelet, you can remember. And you can remember that when we live our lives, we want to live the way Jesus did. What's an example of one thing that Jesus did in the world that was a good thing? Does anyone remember any stories about Jesus that, yeah, shout it. You forgot. Yes, what's something Jesus did? He, he died. He, he sacrificed things for himself and he sacrificed things for other people. He did all sorts of good things. Do you remember ever Jesus feeding people? Raise your hand if you remember Jesus feeding people. So when you feed people, you can remember you're like Jesus. It's wonderful. When you're good to your brothers and sisters, you can remember you're like Jesus. So if any of you didn't get a bracelet after we pray, you can run up and grab one over here. Will you join with me in prayer? Will you repeat after me? Dear God, Dear God we, love we love you. We love Jesus. Help us to live like Jesus did. Amen. Amen. Wonderful job, everyone. So you who are not in the next children's choir can go back to your seats. Otherwise, I think we have some other kids who are going to sing for us. Grab a
A reading from the book of Isaiah. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Thus ends the reading. to thank all the musicians that have led us so far this night and let children know that if you want to be part of the Christmas pageant, head on back to the back of the sanctuary and you get to be whatever it is you want to be on this night. Head on back. And then I'm going to ask the ushers to close those doors. <laughs> Basically, I'm providing cover while they get their costumes on. So for the last number of years, I have shared stories of different Christmas pageants I've been able to be a part of. It seems like if anything crazy is going to happen, it'll happen during a Christmas pageant. Um, you take the pent-up energy of months of waiting, and you stir in a little bit of sugar, and then you add the energy of all the adults in the sanctuary who are full of their own longings and excitement and thoughts, and anything can happen during a Christmas pageant, it seems. The story I want to share with you tonight is not from my own personal experience, but it comes from the experience of my husband, Cooper Wiggin, who is also a United Methodist pastor. He is retired, and he tells me it's a good life. Anyway, Cooper was serving um, in the uptown area of Minneapolis, and he was serving at Joyce United Methodist Church. I don't know how many of you have driven past Joyce United Methodist Church, but it's a huge old structure, sort of in a mission style. It's a mammoth sanctuary, one of those old sanctuaries that has all the wood and the beautiful stained glass. And the city had been changing around Joyce United Methodist Church, and the church 
hadn't necessarily figured out how to be in ministry, and so they were trying to figure out how to support this huge building with a dwindling number of people, and into that combination of need came what every church hopes for, a young pastor with three young kids. True. If you ever ask a search committee what do they want in a pastor, they want a young pastor with three or more kids. So anyway, Cooper began at Joyce United Methodist Church, and my beloved has a penchant for creating productions. He's creative, and he loves to get all kinds of people engaged, and so Cooper determined that for the first time in a long time, it was time for there to be a children's Christmas pageant at Joyce United Methodist Church, and it didn't matter if the roof was leaking or if the boilers were unreliable, it was Christmas pageant time. So they dug out the costumes that had been unused and they found a hay trough and they created that bed for the baby Jesus and the cast rehearsed their lines and they memorized their movements and the big night came for the children to share the story of the birth of Jesus, how it was a child born to refugees became the hope of the world. So the pageant began. Mary and Joseph were each maybe six years old or so, and they were up front with their little baby Jesus, asleep in the hay, and of course the baby Jesus was an inanimate, sweetly loved doll, but the singing of Away in the Manger was underway when it became clear that something was going on in the upper regions of the sanctuary. The congregation watched as the children on stage began to move their heads in unison as if they were watching something in the heavens. And it became pretty clear after a little while that they were watching something at the very same time, and the adults were watching the children watch the something, and they became maybe a little curious and maybe a little concerned, and they began to shift in their seats, and they began to look around until it became clear that it wasn't angels that were winging through the air that was grabbing the attention of the children. There was a bat in the sanctuary. <laughs> And that bat was skittering and flittering everywhere, as bats do. Well, this caused some concern and some anxiety. As for me, had I been there, I would have been out the door. But the bat circled the sanctuary, and I'm sure everybody wondered who was going to do something about it. And then the bat changed its flight course, and it flew straight at the little Lord Jesus, who was asleep in the hay. And as it dive-bombed that cradle, six-year-old Mary leapt to her feet, and she threw herself over that baby, and she protected that baby from the terror of the night. And Cooper cannot much tell this story without weeping over the astounding courage and wisdom of that little girl who knew that when there is something defenseless and precious, you take who you are and what you have and you protect it. There is such an innate powerful force in the way of loving. There is such an innate powerful force that calls us to protect the vulnerable. And yet there is such a longing in us all for the awareness of miracle in our midst. And that is why we're here tonight. We bring so much into this night, don't we? Each one of us walks with our own constellations of longings that we bring into this night. Many of us are missing beloveds who are no longer by our sides. Many of us are struggling with relationships. We don't know how to get along with the people closest to us. And many of us are concerned that our nation seems to keep struggling in ways that we never imagined. It seems like there are bats 
flying in the air all the time and we can't stop watching the chaos around us. But what we're called to remember is unto us, brothers and sisters, a child was born. Unto us a son was given. Hope was made palpably touchable. A child who, like all children, needed protection and all children who continue to need protection in order to thrive into fullness of life. A six-year-old girl knew what it is to protect the fragile and the vulnerable. And so do we. Merry Christmas. Amen. So as we enter into this time of sharing our gifts, I'm delighted to share with you that this congregation decided that we were tired of the fact that there are many children in this city who need excellent child care. And so we opened what's called Thrive Child Care and Family Resource Center on the first floor of our building. And everything that you give tonight for your offering will go for scholarships. Because we want to walk alongside families and we want to protect the most vulnerable and precious in our midst. So as you enter into this time of offering, consider how it is you use who you are and what you have to proclaim good news to all people. Let's enter into offering.
Let us pray. Holy God, as we gather at the manger, we see your son lying in a makeshift bed, in a makeshift birthplace, away from home and family. As we present our gifts to you, we pray they will help those in great need, that they might lift those who are in deep despair, that they may be signs of peace and compassion to those living amidst conflict. We pray this in the name of Jesus, Savior and Redeemer of all, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In those days, a decree went out from, the, from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quarinthius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to, to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because, the, because he was a descendant from the house and family of David. He went He went to be registered with Mary, who was, ex who was expecting a child. While they were there, in that time, came for her to deliver her child. And she gave both birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and lay him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn.
in that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before, uh, stood before them, the gl and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Good news of great joy for all the people. To you, this bo to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the who is the Messiah, the Lord. This is a this will be a this is a this will be a sign for you. You will find the child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest on heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into the heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to the taken, to taken place, which so the Lord has made known to us. So they went, in haste and, went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and a child lying in the manger. When they saw, him, when they saw this, they made no what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. And shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they, for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them.
did a fabulous job. Parents, if you want your children before they take their costumes off, that's okay too. So I invite you to join me in a time of prayer. Gracious God, you call us to sing Gloria. We thank you for the witness of children, for the ways we get to live your grace day after day after day after day. Keep us mindful that angels are singing yet, and that in the midst of so much, you are present. We give you thanks for this and all good gifts, and for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us to cradle him gently, and to live his lessons boldly. These things we pray. Amen. So we are going to invite you to join in passing the light from person to person. And we have um, handheld candles for the children if they like. But what we'll do is we will light the candles, and you'll pass the light from person to person. We ask that you use caution and that the unlit candle get tipped into the lit candle and that you savor the gift of this time of being able to rise and sing this song of hope and of assurance of the power of the holy in our midst. So will you rise and we will join in singing together.
invite you to look around you, to see the presence of others who believe that hope is stronger than fear, others who are willing to say yes to being magnifiers of God's grace. May you experience the most joyous and holy of Christmases. God bless and keep you. Amen.